What's up guys? Welcome to Sidewalk Weekly. I'm John. What's up? I'm Gianni. And every week we'll be discussing some tweets from your favorite artists and how they apply to the electronic community. You know, we want to hear from you guys. Let us know what you want us to discuss by tweeting us at the handle at Sidewalk Talk Show or by commenting below. Let's get into it. Let's do it. All right, this first tweet comes from Rusko. He said, uh, stop playing hip hop in a rave. It's a fucking rave. What do you think about this? You know, I think we really should say like what a rave truly is. You know, it started back then, it started out with just drum and bass and the UK grime scene, which incorporated influences of hip hop and many other genres. Yeah. Destructo it was one of the first people to fully push the rave scene even harder, yeah. you know, cause he, in his music and in his, in, in his sets, you know, they, he tries to mix hip hop and electronic music in general. People today kind of think that, you know, a lot of electronic shows and festivals are considered raves, you know, such as EDC and Hard Summer, For you know, sure. so. Yeah, you know, I was just at EDC, I've been the past four years, and wow. uh, they just brought out Post Malone last year, the year yeah. before that, they yeah. brought out Drake, That's and cool. those were huge, everybody was pumped, you know, Wild. people yeah. were complaining, everybody was thrilled to see them out there, you <laughs> yeah, know, exactly. and I think it just, it only makes the festivals even bigger, because it reaches new fans that may not have come to an electric show if, if they didn't know about that. Right, exactly. You know? And I, you know, with Rusko saying this, I think he's forgetting. Like, what if a producer made a song with a rapper? You tell me they can't bring him right. on to a, a show. Right. Exactly. I feel like everybody loves to see that. I think what right. would be better is maybe just not play the same four hip hop songs. You know, like everybody loves Mo Bamba for a little, and then yeah. now he's playing play. <laughs> exactly. Know? Is there anything else you can think of, of of why like people in general might just not want to hear hip hop? You no. Know, another reason came to mind. You know, a lot of you know typical ravers today. You know, they just. You know, they they go and they, they take these crazy drugs and stuff like that. Because, yeah, yeah. You know, the music is really high energy, you know. But, yeah. You know, if someone plays a hip hop song and stuff like that, it gets very mellow. A little more chill, yeah, yeah. Exactly. yeah. So, that, you know, that's not what they want. They go for like a really good time for that high energy and stuff like that. All right, this tweet comes from Lil Texas saying, cooked up some 200 BPM hardcore that'll send your ass straight to Flavortown. Uh, USA, baby. It's delicious and healthy, brother. Tear it to your ear out now. Now, do you really think that was truly necessary for, you know, Lil Texas to go through that extent to just promote his music? You know, I think today that that really is necessary. You know, like, a lot of people don't know about Lil Texas, but he's a cook, and that's like on branding, and it shares a little bit about his personality with us that we wouldn't get otherwise. I used to love a group called Bass Jackers, and uh, lately they just haven't been putting out original content. I feel right. like I don't really know who they are anymore. Yeah, they keep releasing exactly. music, but I don't, I don't, I don't get that sense of who they are behind their music. And guys like Salvador Ganache are killing it right now. Right. You know, he's got the funniest dance moves you'll ever see, and it just kind of opens up like your mind just to like, oh, this is who this guy is. You know, he's not afraid to show it. And that, that just makes me fall in love with his music even more. Exactly. You really think it's necessary? I, I think it truly is necessary because if you think about it, you know, four years ago, a lot of artists on SoundCloud or whatever didn't really have to, you know, yeah, go sure. through all that work just to promote their music in a creative way. But in today's standards, you know, it's very necessary. You know, it's not just about the music speaking for itself anymore. It's about like who you truly are, like in many other different creative ways. And you know, SoundCloud had the um, repost chains and yeah. that really got a lot of people um, out there in their music. Um, but now you just have to kind of go through that extra step just to, you know, target that, you know, specific audience, you know? For sure. So. Dude, I remember when like Hype M was huge and yeah, if you were on the exactly. top page on that, you would have made it, <laughs> you know? Like I remember listening to some old Louis the Child remixes on there and I was like, these guys are going to make it. Right. 2019 where we're at now, headlining all these festivals. Exactly. So yeah, I think it's definitely necessary. So this next tweet is from my boy Medicine. He said, something important to always remember. Just because the song is big doesn't mean it's good, and just because the song is good doesn't mean it deserves to be big. What do you think about this tweet? Well, I, you know, I think what Medicine was trying to say that you know a lot of people today are measuring on how good a song is, just you know how popular and big it is. Yeah. You know, just because like this song gets this many streams on Spotify, it doesn't mean like it's the best song or whatever. Like it could have like very few streams. It could be one of the most impactful songs to you or to yeah. someone else. You know, and it just. It depends on you. You know, what I think a good song is, it's a song that you want to share with your friends and family, and you can all have that beautiful spiritual um, adventure together, and you'll share that with, um, with them for the rest of your lives. But I think it's a different story with a big song. 
You know, I think a big song is something that people can play out. Yeah. You know, it's something that labels are going to push. Right. Something that you might hear on the radio. Right. You know, you're not going to hear a smaller song, you know, on the radio. Right, or a bad right. song necessarily. So I think it's more about, I think a great example with this is the Chainsmokers with Selfie. You know, they had fun. They made a song. And it ended up being big because people could play it out. Mm -hmm. You know, people love to dance to it. And uh, people were playing it on the radio. You know, labels weren't afraid to push it. I think another great example is a guy like Zed, who just came out with a song with Katy Perry called 365. Right. Now, he made a pop version, and that version's huge. It's big, you know? Everybody's playing it out. You hear it on the radio 24-7. But then he decided to make a right. house remix of his own song. And right. did he intend for that one to be as big? Mm -hmm. That doesn't have the radio push. But I think it's still a great song, you know? Just Definitely. It's something that I like to dance to. Of course. It's fun, you know, to hear it out. <laughs> yeah. So I think that's a great example. In this segment, we're gonna be going over the biggest announcement of the week. So what do we got today? We got some really interesting information from Skrillex on Twitter. He's been tweeting out, been taking long time off working on my friend's album, but more importantly, myself. Been lots of rumors of an album. I don't know what it is or what to call it. And then he says, but I'm about to start putting in this new work, going full speed ahead, no turning back. He ends with, but this is just the warm up. What do you think the next step for Skrillex? I see a lot of artists going into the pop, you know, like sound and trying to put out different music, you know, the pop industry is growing right now and it's making the most money out of any genre. So I think Skrillex is just gonna combine a little bit of his old dubstep roots with the pop industry and just take off from there. I kind of highly doubt that, to be honest, because it's like, you know, if you look at Skrillex as like a true artist himself, you know, he had, you know, Dog Blood, of course, Scary Monsters, which basically got everyone into, you know, besides dubstep, just electronic music in general. But that's the old Skrillex. Yeah, but... He's working on something new, something know, fresh. I, I, Any I artist could get artist. bigger. Yeah, but it's Skrillex, you know, who... Who's, who's gonna look up a pop artist named Skrillex? Like, that makes no sense. I to think me. everybody would. <laughs> That's just if like, Skrillex put out a pop song, you're telling me you wouldn't listen to it? Definitely not. <laughs> what? Definitely not. What do you no. guys think? You would know, you guys listen to Skrillex if he made a pop song? It's up to you guys, for sure. Like, what do you guys think? Thank you guys so much for watching. And don't forget, you can submit your tweets by tweeting at Sidewalk Talk Show or by commenting below. Tune in next Monday.